Some people are looking at this fight like it's a lamb being brought to the slaughter. Others see it as a chance for Nathan Diaz to flip the bird at the UFC on the last fight of his contract. Either way, with the UFC 279 headliner now set in stone, Hamzat versus Diaz looks to be set as one of the most unmissable bouts of the year. But how do some of the sport's biggest stars see it playing out on fight night? This is UFC fighters predict Hamzat Shamaya versus Nate Diaz. Justin Gaethje Justin Gaethje has had his name linked to Nate Diaz on more than one occasion over the years. Obviously, the dude has had the most lethal leg kicks in the game, and when you think about just how free of a target Nate is for them, most would agree that Gaethje would come into this fight with a major advantage. Justin definitely is a bone to pick with Nate though, but as soon as he realized that the Stockton legend wouldn't be taking on Hamzat Shamayev at 170 pounds, he couldn't help but give him some major respect. Say what you want about Diaz, but that dude is not afraid of anyone, and Gaethje, while he still thinks that Nate is clearly ducked to Beeb, gave his rival props for signing on the dotted line to take on Boars. So how will that bow go for Diaz according to the highlight? Well, at first Justin gave him a 0% chance of winning, before then changing his mind and giving him a 1%. In his view, the lack of power in wrestling will be a huge problem for Nate in there, and unless something truly miraculous happens, Shamayev's undefeated streak will continue on without much issue. Of course not. I know he's, uh, I heard he turned down Khabib about 20 times, so for him to uh, meet for losing to Khabib, I find that hilarious. Saturday, you say but if he's fighting comes out next, then I gotta give him some credit. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see that fight going his way? I don't know. Of course not. <laughs> but, but, you know, again, I'm a fan of this sport because anything can happen at any time. But he doesn't, what's he gonna, he's not gonna out-wrestle him. He doesn't have, he doesn't even have the power to shut, I mean, to shut someone's light out on accident, you know? So, no, no chance. He is a 0% chance. 1% chance. Brendan Schaub. Brendan Schaub might not be known for his amazing takes on the general happenings of the MMA world, but to his credit, his opinion on Nate Diaz versus Hamzad is pretty spot on. According to the former UFC heavyweight, if Chemayev goes in there and tries to take a similar approach that he did to Gilbert Burns, he might be playing right into Nate's hands. Hamza was pretty disappointed with himself for brawling with Durino last time around, when a smarter tactical game plan would have served him better. In Shab's words, if Hamza goes in there looking to scrap, who knows, he might learn a thing or two about Nate that he didn't expect. Diaz's own route to victory will probably come by way of submission, especially if he can gas out Boars on the feet. And that seems to be where Brennan's thoughts lie. Even if he didn't outright say that he's picking the underdog here, most are giving Diaz no chance, just like Justin Gaethje did, but for Shab, when you have a fighting spirit like Nate's, there's always a chance of springing the upset. For Brendan Schaub, seeing him pull off a win like that, given how much it would hurt the UFC, would be nothing short of hilarious. I'm a big Hamzat fan. He obviously he's a favorite. Well, I think uh, minus 1100 favorite some shit. Yeah. So you know, I would I would be interested to see because you know Nate's tough man, and if the same Hamzat that fought Gilbert fights. That's going to be a tough fight for him. So he has to fight smart, fight the game plan. But there, the, Nate can win this fight. I do think Nate could win this fight. And I think it'd be hilarious. Could mess up the UFC's plans. Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley just signed himself down for a fight that's eerily similar to Chamaya vs. Diaz. Not many people are giving him a chance at beating the number one ranked Piotr Jan in his next outing. But after spending years hovering around the fringes of the top 10, O'Malley truly believes he's ready to make a dent at the bantamweight top 5. Like him, Nate Diaz is also expected to lose against his next opponent, and O'Malley isn't so sure that he should rule him out. He doesn't exactly get into it in great detail, but it's clear that Sugar Sean understands the fight business and narrative drawn up by the media and the fans doesn't quite bring you the full story. On top of his clear interest in Nate's status as an underdog, O'Malley is also quite curious just how well this pay-per-view will do. Both Diaz and Shamayev are pretty huge stars, and even though a lot of people are writing this fight off as a showcase for Hamzad, Sean O'Malley believes that even if it does do great numbers, Nate cannot be disregarded as a threat to the Chechen contender. Whether he himself can get past Piotr Jan is anyone's guess, but we're moving into a very, very interesting time in two of the UFC's most popular divisions, that is for sure. I think a lot of people are just kind of right, take, uh, uh, writing Diaz off. You know, I think 90% of people think it, uh, Hamzad's going to go in there and ragdoll him. I don't necessarily think that that's true, um, but I think that's kind of the narrative around that fight is I'm actually very curious to see how much that sells. Nate Diaz is a massive star, obviously, probably top two in the UFC right now, um, but I'm very interested in seeing how many pay-per-views that sells. If it does over 400,000, if it, you know, I think a few people want to pay to see Diaz get whooped. I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. Gilbert Burns. As Hamzat Shemaev's last opponent, and the man who managed to survive the most time inside the cage with him, Gilbert Burns knows exactly what the dude is capable of. 
and you best believe that he was impressed with what he saw. So with an eye on the upcoming matchup between Hamza and Nate Diaz, Burns makes it very clear that he's definitely going to watch it as a fan, but it's not really a fight that makes sense. He even says that he doesn't think Diaz has a chance of winning and that Hamza will just be too much for him in every facet of the bout. The fan in Gilbert Burns can't help but be swept up by the whole spectacle of it all, but his prediction is a pretty bleak one for the Stockton's favorite fighting son. His own fight with Shemaev was, of course, razor close, so don't be too surprised to see Gilbert calling for a rematch if he can win this next outing. It doesn't make no sense for me, you know, I don't know. If, for, as a fan, no ranks, no nothing, as a fan, fuck yeah, we're watching that fight. I don't think maybe has a chance in that fight. I would like to think that to get that fight, I, I don't think he has a, a chance, but as a fan, I'm watching. Want to take your own win this weekend at UFC 278? This Saturday, our partners at DraftKings, the official sports betting partner of the UFC, are giving $200 in free bets to all new customers that bet $5 on any fighter to win. That's right, bet $5 on any fighter and get $200 in free bets instantly no matter what. If you want to heat up the action even more, you can combine multiple bets in the same fight, like which fighter will win, how long the fight will last, and more in the same game parlay. Your bag gets bigger if all your bets hit. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. This weekend, we're riding with the Nigerian Nightmare, Kamara Usman, Luke Rockhold, and Jose Aldo. Who do you have winning? Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now, use promo code WATCHMMA, bet $5 on any UFC 278 fighter to win, and get $200 in free bets instantly, no matter what. That's code WATCHMMA this Saturday at DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the UFC. Leon Edwards One man who will have some real interest in the UFC 279 headliner is Nate's former opponent and the man who was scheduled to fight Shamayev on numerous occasions, Leon Edwards. As the next in line for a crack at Kamara Usman's bell, if he does, in fact, win, it's pretty clear that the UFC will move to set him up for his first title defense against the winner of Hamza vs. Diaz. Leon thinks that the UFC has done Diaz dirty by setting him up against a young, hungry wrestler, adding that it would have been better to see him in there with a fellow veteran of the game. But this is the fight that we've gotten, and for Edwards, his money appears to be on Hamza, as much as he would love to see Nate Diaz get the job done. It's important to remember that Nate was a massive betting underdog when he took on Leon over 5 rounds, and though he was totally outclassed for the first 24 minutes, the insane rally he pulled off in the final 60 seconds left him with the most Diaz-ish moral victory imaginable. So yeah, we're guessing Leon wants that rematch. Um, I pro if I put money on it, I'd probably go Hamza, you know, and, uh, but I'll love Nate. Nate to get it done. He's done so much for the company, and um, I wish they gave him like a probably like another veteran, probably just a nice fight to bow out to, you know, and to give him like an up and coming guy that's had like what four or five fights in the UFC and a wrestler guy as well, you know. I think it's fucked up, really. <laughs> they should have gave him more of a better, better fight, but I'd love let Nate to get it done. But like I said, if I'm, if I'm a betting man, I'd probably go Hamza. Remember, if you're enjoying our content and want to see more, be sure to leave a like before subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on any of our weekly uploads. Daniel Cormier One word that most are using to describe this fight is mismatch, and the former UFC 2 division champion Daniel Cormier is no exception. When Hamzat took on Gilbert Burns last time around, DC didn't see a fighter struggling to implement his usual game plan. He saw a young welterweight contender proving the world that he doesn't have any quit in him. He showed us that he's not willing to give up on himself, and this, along with his power and his wrestling skills, gives him a major advantage against the hard-nosed Nate Diaz. Cormier, like many of us, just doesn't see a path of victory for Nate in this one, and in a battle of wills, DC thinks that Hamzat is about to surprise us in a big way. It will not be as valuable as a win over Nathan Diaz. Then you gotta expect that he will fight Kamaru Usman next. This kid is, is, is dangerous, he has a ton of power, and like you said, what we saw in the Gilbert Burns fight is that he's tough. He's not going to give up on himself. So maybe he seemed as though he wasn't as dominant in that fight, but we saw him against another guy that's right at the top of the division, go through the fire, and not only win, but win in what can be considered one of the best fights that we've seen all year. So I just think that these guys are at different points in their careers right now, and I, I do believe it's a mismatch. And Nate's going to say something to me, but... I hope he understands that I'm doing my job, you know? Michael Bisbing. If there's one recurring theme to a lot of these predictions, it's that the MMA community have had a major level of respect for Nate for accepting this fight. No matter how his contract is looking, the fact that Diaz is willing to get in there and take a matchup that most believe he will lose is worthy of the highest levels of respect. One man who knows a thing or two about being a major underdog is the former middleweight champion, Michael Bisbing. 
But even the Count can't help but think that Nate is just biting off more than he can chew with this one. And it's not that hard to understand why. That said, Bisbing isn't ruling out a Nate Diaz win if he's able to pull off his stellar BJJ skills to good use. The idea of Diaz winning on the feet is a pretty long shot, but Bisbing seems to think that Nate could well catch Jemayev napping on the mat if Boris is not careful. Hell, look at what happened to Conor McGregor. When you have a fighter as determined as tough as Nate, ruling out a crazy submission is never a wise idea, but that Hail Mary finish is probably Diaz's only realistic route to victory according to this UFC Hall of Famer. Uh... Other than a submission, other than catching a submission, I really don't see a way in which Nate Diaz can win this. But you know what? The fact that he's taking the fight, the fact that he's going to try, the fact that he's definitely going to show up and try and win the fight, that's why people love Nate Diaz. You know what I mean? He's going to go into this one a ridiculous underdog, you know? But again, that's why they love him. Because it's like, you know, if you see somebody standing up to the bullies or whatnot, you know, it's always admirable. It's always great to see. Nate Diaz coming into this one against Hamzat Chime. I have a guy that pretty much no one wants to fight at this point. Nate Diaz is willing to take it. But is it just because simply that's the only fight? I don't know, but either way, massive, massive news. Nate Diaz, Hamza Chimev, final fight of Nate Diaz's contract. There it is. It is set in stone. It is done. I can't wait for it. And Alexander Gustafsson. The longtime teammate of Hamzat Shemaev, Alexander Gustafsson, has spent more than enough hours in the gym with Boris to know precisely how good he is and how good he can be. Many of the stories that have come out of their shared team at All-Stars Training Center in Sweden have painted Shemaev in a pretty crazy light. Even though Gustafsson fights two weight classes above Hamza, we don't doubt that they've had some absolute wars behind closed doors. Hamza just seems like the type of guy who makes a habit out of sparring with men much larger than him. According to Gus, Shemaev is ready to continue doing what he's been doing, and he fully backs him to put a real beating on Nate Diaz. No matter who the opponent is right now, the Mahler believes that Hamzat is more than capable of rising up and putting them away. And when it comes to Nate Diaz, Gus sees Hamzat finishing it in brutal fashion. Amazing. He's going to do what he's, what he's doing all the time, Hamzat. He's just going to go in there and, and beat him up. He's ready. He's ready for the... And you know, you all seen him and uh, whatever they, they put in front of him, he's going to beat it up. So he's ready. Hamzat Shemaev. Hamzat Shemaev might be the bluntest fighter in the sport today. He doesn't waste time with long, drawn-out predictions. He keeps it simple. He's a hungry wolf and he's going to smash every single fighter in his path. There's clear respect there for Nate as Hamzat explained to Ariel Hawani that he admires what Diaz has done after taking the fight, calling him a legend and a gangster. But as a gangster from Chechnya in his own right, he's very calmly explained how he makes a habit of eating other gangsters for breakfast. Talking about a chilling prediction, right? Whether the UFC gave him Diaz or a shot at the 170 pound champ Kamara Usman, the end result according to Boris would not change. All that remains now is to see how these two legendary characters match up once their microphones in front of them because that opening press conference is going to be a hell of a time. But he's respect for that guy, he took that fight. You know, he knows I'm younger and hungry, you know, like I'm going up and take my belt and the guy show up and fight with me. She's respect for him. Uh, you posted a picture of uh, you at his funeral. Uh, yeah, do, yeah. Do you feel like you are being, you know, pretty much picked by the UFC to end his career, to end his career on a bad note? Do, do you like this position? Do you feel comfortable with this position? Yeah, why not? But for me, it actually doesn't matter. They, if they will give me Kamaru smile, I will do the same thing, you know, like bad. For me, it doesn't matter. The guys just fight, fight, you know, they, he's still dangerous, you know, he's like, he fight the last second. And uh, I'm happy he's fighting with me. He's one of the legends, you know, like one of the speaking, like everyone speaking like gangster, gangster. Now we're going to show who is the gangsters, you know, like, I like, I told that before, we Chechnya and we were from Chechnya and we go up on the wall and we eat the gangsters for breakfast, you know. <laughs> And that'll just about do it for this video. But how do you think this UFC 279 matchup will play out? Will the strong momentum of Hamzat allow him to defeat one of the biggest stars in the sport today? Or will Nate be able to pull off the upset of the year? Again, if you've enjoyed today's video and want to see more, be sure to leave a like and comment before subscribing to the channel so you can stay up to date with all of our latest uploads. Thank you for watching. What's up, everyone?